Happy, happy new year. Hope you guys are well and all the best for 2022. I greet you in the precious name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In our 25th mnemonic today, we are going through a differential for hypertension. It may not necessarily make much sense. <laughs> so, you know, I have a friend who told me that his New Year's resolution is to watch what he eats. Now, he looks at his food very carefully before he takes a bite. <laughs> <laughs> So, guys, you know, the definition of hypertension um, is split basically into stage one, stage two, and uh, stage one hypertension is systolic blood pressure between 140 and 159 mils mercury, or diastolic between 90 and 99. Stage two is systolic exceeding 160 and diastolic exceeding 100. All right. So, there's a varied etiology, right? So, zero is the usual run of the mill essential hypertension. Then, one is anatomical causes like coarctation of the aorta and aortic dissection. And big clues for coarctation include the radio radial delay, radio femoral delay, upper limb hypertension, rib notching on the chest x ray, and so forth. Then, renal causes like renal parenchymal disease, and then we have chronic renal failure, where we talk about cause or effect, because chronic renal failure can cause hypertension, but hypertension can also cause chronic renal failure. Here. So is it the chicken or the egg? <laughs> Polycystic kidney disease, especially uh, the autosomal dominant form. And renal artery stenosis. And you consider renal artery stenosis in someone who has renal brui and who has hypertension in the context of hypokalemia. Right? And there's a varied etiology for that, which we will discuss a little bit later. And remember, renal artery stenosis can be caused by fibromuscular dysplasia or by atherosclerosis. Then adrenal causes like phaochromocytoma, Kahn syndrome, and Cushing syndrome. And there also the situation is hypertension with hypokalemia. Other causes of hypertension with hypokalemia includes um, Barter syndrome, where there's a problem with the sodium potassium 2 chloride channel in the thick ascending limb of the loop of henal, uh, which is analogous to using a loop diuretics, really. And the other one is um, Gittleman syndrome, where there's a problem with the sodium chloride co-transporter in the distal tubule, which is analogous to using thiazide diuretics. Hmm. And also, licorice can also cause it. And how does licorice cause it? By inhibiting the enzyme 11 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase 2, which sits on the epithelial sodium channel in the distal tubule. Now, normally, that um, enzyme prevents um, cortisol from activating the uh, aldosterone receptor. But when it's overwhelmed, when you have too much of licorice, then it allows cortisol to activate that receptor, bringing in sodium and dumping potassium. And the net result is hypertension with hypokalemia. Okay, and then we go on to number four, which is sense, which doesn't make much sense. If you consider this, it does make sense. So S is super growth. So acromegaly can also cause hypertension, right? Then uh, C is for calcium in the context of hypercalcemia, especially hyperparathyroidism. E stands for estrogen and drugs. Right, so all of these can cause hypertension, the likes of non steroidals, corticosteroids, anabolic steroids, oral contraceptives, cocaine, amphetamines, monoamine and oxidase inhibitors with your cheese reaction, uh, SNRIs, SSRIs, erythropoietin, cyclosporin, <gasps> tacrolimus, midodrin, alcohol excess, licorice, all of these things cause hypertension. N stands for neurological, and then we have Cushing's triad, where you're looking at a situation of hypertension with bradycardia and respiratory depression due to any cause of raised intracranial pressure. T stands for thyroid, both hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism. But remember, with hyperthyroidism, you usually get isolated systolic hypertension. And with hypothyroidism, isolated diastolic hypertension. But not always the case. And S is for sleep apnea. Don't forget autoimmune etiologies as well, like your connective tissue diseases, your lupus, etc. So it's prudent to do an ANF in those circumstances. So in terms of a workup for secondary causes, if you're looking at hyperaldosteronism, if the patient has um, clinical features which indeed support this, which is what we said was spontaneous hypokalemia, uh, and uh, resistance to more than three antihypertensive drugs or in adrenal incident loma with hypertension, then you want to consider doing a re renin aldosterone ratio, a saline infusion test, or oral sodium loading test, or adrenal vein sampling. Plasma renin activity is difficult to interpret in patients taking uh, spinalactone, which is your mineralocorticoid receptor antagonist, so be aware of that. In terms of your fair chromocytoma workup, if clinical features are present, that is, if there's paroxysm or severe hypertension refractory to your usual antihypertensive drugs, and they have symptoms of catecholamine in excess or hypertension, which is triggered by beta blockers or monium and oxidase inhibitors or mitridition or valsalva, or you may have an adrenal incident loma with hypertension or part of a genetic syndrome like men 2 a Main 2B, von Huppel Landau, or neurofibromatosis, then consider doing 24 hour urine metanephrine or uh, um, 
uh, plasma fractionation emission nephrines. Other endocrine workup can be calcium, albumin, parathyroid hormone, TSH, free T4, 24-hour unit cortisol, 1 milligram dexamethasone suppression test, overnight dexamethasone suppression test, late night salivary cortisol, all that for Cushing's IGF-1. Renal vascular workup, if we have more than two of the following clinical features present, that is sudden onset or worsening hypertension and age either less than 30 years old or above 55, together with the presence of an abdominal brewery, resistance to more than three antihypertensive drugs, a raised in creatinine in above 30 percent with ACE inhibitor or ARB use, other atherosclerotic disease or recurrent flash pulmonary edema, then you want to consider doing a renal Doppler ultrasound, CT or MR angiogram and or renal angiogram. If you suspect steep apnea, do a steep oximetry test. There you go guys, secondary hypertension and a differential for that. One, two, three, four, since. God bless you.